Ladies and gents, all is not right in the state of Ibaraki. That is, it's 36 degrees outside, it's like 29 in here, and my body is not acclimatized to Japan. It wasn't even acclimatized to Canada. I moved there and I was like, damn, Canada's hot. So here we are, in my hot kitchen, trying to talk about something that I have done is now three times. It's take three, or as I will hyperbolically say, it's take 29. Take 29! Ladies and gents, it's audio again at Photography Lounge. And it is of this unit here, the mini disc recorder, quote, 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 MZNH3D. I say quote unquote because this bad boy is actually a net downloader. And I believe that the NH stands for net H high for high MD. Three. Don't know what 3 stands for, but let's just forget about that. And D for downloader. Net, because you can attach it to your computer. If you can see on the bottom here, there is a proprietary USB port. Now, Sony used this sort of thing and still uses proprietary cables on their DAPs. But it connects this chunky, chunky USB. Here's a broken side of a regular USB, um, what, A style? and the proprietary end that goes into this, you can connect it directly to your computer, or you can do the more attractive thing, I suppose, and put it in this little cradle, and then <laughs> charge it from the mains. But if you're gonna have to, I guess you do have to connect it to your computer. The reason is because while this is a recorder, you cannot record directly to it. That is, there are no audio inputs on this side, this side, this side, or this side. The only ports on this thing are the output port as well as the USB on this side. So this is a, oh, it's hot, <laughs> sorry. This is an interesting player and it's both the end of an age for Sony. This was their last downloader, their last high-end downloader, sorry. And it is one of their last high-end uh, high MD units. They had, of course, the RH1, which was the fully recorder, came with, uh, and, the, and the MS200, I think is what it's called, that came with a, a separate microphone, etc., that was ready to set up to do any sort of recording you want and uploading. This one does downloading. That's it. Because of that, and because I don't have like Windows 2000, in fact, I don't have Windows, I just have Wine on my OS X box, that is short for Mac OS X iMac computer. I do my recording on a deck. Currently I have the new JA3, no, sorry, new to me, it's old, the JA333ES. And I have also the JE780, don't remember what it says after that. Nice deck, the JA333ES is phenomenal. And with this player, slash recorder slash downloader is not beautiful. It's a bit stoic looking, at least to my estimation. I don't know what this curve is for. I don't know why it's um, brushed aluminium there and not here on the sides. Some people may find this beautiful. I find it a bit problematic, but it is made wonderfully. Solid, screws in the right places. You can even press down in the middle and there's very little body flex, just like the JA333ES over the JE780. The 780, I wouldn't put an iMac in the middle, but, and don't tell anyone this, but currently I have my iMac, which is like, I don't know, 15 kilograms, on top of the JA333ES, and it's not sinking in at all. It's wonderful. Um, and anyway, this is, it's hot. I published yesterday the RMAA results for this, and. I just can't believe it. My site doesn't usually get a lot of traffic, but yesterday it got like three times the amount of traffic it usually gets when I'm not doing much. Um, and it was for some reason, everyone wanted to see the RMAA results of this. RMAA results are not reliable. I don't ever suggest anyone can compare my results to anyone else's, but among the results I've tested, I have not used a single AMD player that's gone above 92 decibels of dynamic range or noise. This one goes all the way up to 
97, minus 97.5 noise level and 97.6 decibels on dynamic range. Now that basically tops out 16-bit. 16, 16 you can't really get higher than that. I mean, theoretically you can. It's a decibel higher than that. And that's the top of uh, the top end of 16-bit. You couldn't get DAPs, of course, that go much higher than that. But in terms of listening volume, you're never going to be listening to, say, the maximum volume of what a um, DPS1 can do, 120 decibels. If you do that, you're going to be breaking your earphones, you're going to be breaking your ears, and you're not going to be having fun because within five minutes you'll have lost some, or 15 minutes you will have lost a certain amount of your uh, hearing. So you're going to listen to anywhere between 80 and probably 100 decibels, which means that this has you covered. And you plug in a pair of earphones, and to plug the earphones in um, and measure for RMAA, I'm using the max volume. So I'm using exactly what this thing can top out at as 96 decibels. And you go down to um, volume listening range that I listen to, about 85, and it stays around 85. One preview though is that stereo crosstalk is not good. Um, even unloaded RMA, as good as that is, says that it's minus 69.6 decibels, where it should be minus 99, or roughly 100 decibels. So basically this thing is dropped by 30%, and that's one third, and if you plug in a pair of earphones, it goes all the way down to minus 50, or minus 49.5, so basically you're dropping the signal in half. So not the best stereo separation, but of course if you like a bit of channel bleed, I think, personally, I think that around 50, degree, 50 decibels is essentially optimal to get a little bit of channel bleed, but also enjoy the stereo image. So in my estimation, it doesn't test better than this for subjective sound quality. For objective sound quality, there's a lot of better sounding devices. Of course, the proviso is that you'll never listen to the volume at which you can really have those units strut their stuff. Bravo, Sony. Um, the last thing I really want to say before I move on here is that uh, it has a bit more hiss than I'd like. It passes the vo iPod video or iPod 5G test, but it hisses. If you have sensitive earphones like a Campfire Audio Andromeda or um, Shure 8, uh, SE846 or an Ultrasone EQ, you, even the Grado GR8, you're going to hear a certain amount of hiss at low volume levels. And if you're at your bedside table and you just want to listen to music, you're going to notice the hiss as much as you will notice the music. At least you're listening to extreme low volume levels. When you bump up the volume to say 5 or 10 out of 30 or whatever it is, it's not going to be a problem, but you will still notice in quiet passages a hiss. And it's an amp hiss, it's not from the music itself. It's higher than I would like, but it's still passable for sensitive earphones. So that isn't a big problem, especially since recently my favorite earphones have been the Sony MDR EX1000. Again, I've got to give credit to Hawaii Bad Boy, whose channel is, I guess will be linked in the description for suggesting that they are one of the best mass-produced earphones on the planet. I totally agree. And when it comes to it, when it comes to it, corollary in the MD players is this is one of the best sounding, subjectively sounding, and one of the best testing MD units, portable MD units ever made. I prefer actually listening to the MZ E55. The reason is that on that unit it has a mega bass switch. This thing doesn't have mega bass. It has a couple of um, DSP settings and it has some like studio and live um, channel bleed settings which are interesting but they're not as fun as just going shift to the mega bass. Um, of course the MZE55 hisses a lot, does not pass the iPod 5G test, uh, it's not as well made, battery doesn't last as long, it's not as sleek, it's actually smaller, interesting, it's a, it's a much older player, six years older. I don't use it very much because it's hard to use, the interface is poor, um, as you'll see after this, I'll show you. Um, and I don't necessarily like using it, but hold... I like the idea of this player existing, this player recorder. It's so well made and it functions well, and it performs well, and it does everything that it should and that a high-end MD player should, and a lot of high MD players did not, that, well, okay, it cost me a bit of money, I want to sell it, but I don't want to get rid of it. It's just one of those 
it's one of those anchor items that I have. There's a couple of lenses I have, like the Leica Zoomicron 50 millimeter from 1969. There are better performing lenses. There are lenses that don't, ha I don't think they have better bokeh in the 50 millimeter F2 range. There's ones that uh, are a bit sharper, ones that uh, have a little bit less spherochromatism or whatever it's called, but they don't overall deliver everything that I want as well as this one. So, or is that lens? And this is essentially that one as well. And the MZ E55, if it didn't hiss, I would actually take over this all the time. I still do use it more often because that thing cost me like 2000 yen and this one is a lot more. And the MZ55, if I break it, I can pick up another one from 2000 yen to 5000 yen, whereas this one, no. I leave it on a desk. I make sure nothing's ever touching it. I keep it in a little lens pouch like this pristine in case I ever want to sell it I don't dare put it in my pocket even though it's got good skip protection it says 40 seconds but there's a lot of 40 second players that will skip a lot quicker than this one this one does not skip easily it's just well managed and it's a shame that I don't want to use it but anyway let's take this take a look at this from a different angle up close and personal the Sony MZ NH3 D is not the prettiest of faces and it's not the ugliest faces and it's not just an ugly or a pretty face it is a solid I'm squeezing here even in the central portion of this thing I can squeeze it and it barely moves I mean it moves of course but it barely moves it's like it's like really feeling or holding a Sony ES deck rather than one of their regular decks it's just solid you can put an iMac on it anyway check this bad boy I'm squeezing there's a bit of flex right in the middle, but you wouldn't expect otherwise. Metal has certain tolerances, and that's not the modern version of tolerance. This is actual tolerance. Um, it doesn't flex in the corners. It's solid. The USB interface here, of course, the proprietary interface, is stuck in a hard plastic grommet, barely flexes. The lock isn't just a piece of metal that can get scratched. There's actually a piece of protective plastic around it. The hold button. You don't need to use your nail, you can just switch it with your thumb or with a finger. Brilliant. The sides on this side, the sides on this side, all solid. The remote control and headphone input, or output, sorry, are stuck in between two of the metal plates, or the single metal plate here, and just extruded through with the regular plastic insulation. Incredible. This side completely solid squish 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 there's no movement at all same here the metal is braced on the inside and this plastic here is extruded through and installed very solidly i mean that is just basically the theme of this player solid the mzb100 is a little bit more robust overall in terms of well it's got hit a little bit with the ugly stick anyway and it's got rubber feet in the bottom so you don't worry about scratching it but this one, in terms of precision build, is higher quality. Now check out this battery compartment. It's actually under the Sony logo, rather than in the corner, like you'll find with a lot of their players, under an obvious battery latch. No. It's under the Sony logo on the front, and you just pull it like that, and it pops open with the pressure of the battery, because there's a, a, a spring in the bottom. And the battery, like all their modern units, or at least their higher-end modern units, has plus and minus on the bottom here, which means that you don't need to worry about the contacts in the top um, crystallizing or anything like that. You don't have to worry about any sort of corrosion here. It's all done inside the compartment and it latches on, it's extremely solid. Now, check out this bad boy. This is the one touch eject. I'm gonna pull this, bam. It's as fast as the sharps. The one thing I don't like about it is that it is a small target to open here and if you're opening it here you're going to end up having to hold the Sony like this and so when you press the one touch eject this clamshell is going to fold slightly into your fingers so it's not going to open as quickly normally because your fingers will be in the way but when you can get it to work properly it just fires right out I mean damn now the interface is what is bad about this player, and let me tell you how bad it is. It doesn't even make sense according to its own logic. The play button is here, and it's a pause. It's a play, pause, and 
track forward, track back style and volume. It's volume, tr play forward, play back and pause button all at once and it's a jog stick. The jog stick isn't the problem. The problem is that in its own logic, the play button is facing that way. So the carrot is pointing that way. So you would think that if you hit play and then you want to track forward, then you would nudge the jog stick forward this way. What that does actually is bring the volume up. What? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. And conversely, you pull the jog stick this way, which you would think would track back, actually brings the volume down. Track forward is pressing up on the jog stick and track back is pressing down on it. This is a ridiculous design. It's one of the worst designs I've ever seen from anyone and I'm surprised that it came from Sony. The stop button fortunately works as advertised and is pretty well labeled, but it's close to the group button and the download button. So you can accidentally hit group when you want to stop it and this is just a mess because you will accidentally pause it, you'll accidentally play it, you'll accidentally maybe go track forward or track back when you want to change volume. It is the worst tangle that I have ever seen on any portable player, bar none. That is the problem because otherwise this player is just pure gold, even like I said, the hold switch. Now let's just take a look at its accessories. This is the charging stand has one of these angled foots, feet, sorry, like you'll find on, okay, you won't find a cheap rubber thing and plastic thing like this on a high-end ES deck or a high-end, let's say, like Alvi uh, $20,000 amplifier, but you'll find this sort of downward carrot style on higher-end um, decks. Also, this is a rubber foot here, so it's not gonna slide. The Sony just clips right in like this and it doesn't come out until you hit the release button. The release button basically looses a caliper on the side, just like your bicycle brake, and that caliper goes into the back here, which is of course the plastic um, nub that protects the metal. Beautiful, just wonderful construction all around. I will spend just a couple of minutes showing you the remote, remote control. So first, we're going to have to fire up remote control like this. And let's hit play, which is on the bottom here. Notice here that on the remote control, the play button and the track forward and track back actually work in conjunction logically with each other. So hit play like that. Track forward goes this way. Track back goes this way. Volume is on a different control. Now the disc is moving, as you can tell. At least I hope you can tell. Track one, the menu system is accessed by pressing long on this scroll wheel here. You can go through a couple of things, change your um, speed control, you can search songs, etc. Cancel or play, or sorry, stop, gets you out of that. And then you can go to a different menu and you can adjust, say, your volume lock system. Uh, you can change your menu modes. Uh, you can defeat the beep, change the backlight settings and if you want to take away the disk me and memory so that you can plop in a disk later at a time and it won't um, resume playback where you started, you can do that as well. The sound for changing sort of studio settings and some of your bass etc is right here. Play mode here, display function here and the hold is this long strip. It's generally a pretty damn well engineered remote control. It's large. Easy to see, there's three lines here, and then there's more display here. So it's basically got everything you would need um, and is certainly a precursor for uh, later um, iPod and, well, maybe not iPod, but certain DAP units. Um, it's, it's well made, pretty solid, and you can, this is cool, you can switch the direction of the clip. So if you wanna use it left-handed or right-handed um, on a different shirt, just, just well made, well designed all around bravo to Sony for the make of this thing and completely non-bravo for the interface on this unit. Because I don't use the remote control, I generally just plug in headphones and I want to go and this thing is just redonkulous to use. Okay, ladies and gents, now that we've taken a look at that from a different angle, I just want to say a few parting words and that is that lots more MD stuff is going to come and of course more lens and camera stuff. It's been a little bit hot so that autofocus 
autofocus test that I've been promising for the SL and um, XH1 is just a little bit delayed. Um, in the meantime, I just want everyone to know who's looking for a 2000 and for, uh, for an MD player in 2018 that this one is one of the best ones out there. If you don't mind the price and you don't mind about possibly scarring something that is quite expensive, it's well made, sounds good, passes the critical tests of being usable with sensitive earphones and it works. Decent remote control, poor interface, really precise engineering behind it. The N MZ NH3D is one of the best MP3 players on the market or ever was. It's also a little bit unique because it's just a downloader even though it's a recorder. So it's a very strange position in the market. Um, it's a little bit thicker than certain players. I was looking over there because I was thinking I might have the MZ NH NE1 or whatever it's called, the other, the, the, ver the version of the just player only that came at the same time, but I don't, don't know where that is. Where did it go? Um, it's a little bit bigger than players. It's a little bit player, larger even than the MZ E55, but it's just brilliant. Um, otherwise, as long as you can get by the little bit of hiss and of course the interface, which is poor. And the fact that you, you know, it's what, 2004, 2008, it's 14 years old. There's no, Sony aren't servicing it anymore. If you break it, that's it. Anyway, great player. I hope to hear from you. Please leave a thumbs up or thumbs down and subscribe if you want. If you do leave a thumbs down, please leave a comment. What can I can do better? I know that I need to do scripting better. I know I need to stop sweating. Uh, those will happen as time goes on because it's almost fall, three or four months from now. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.